I'm doing, I'm starting a high school um, group. And what high school does he go to? Is it Catholic? Yeah, so he goes to Father Ryan High School. In Nashville? Yes. Okay, so yes, yeah, so you can start a turning point in your high school, and um, and he was very excited, and I was inspired, just like I'm sure you all were. They've got so much passion and so much determination. It's encouraging and inspiring. And one of the things they mentioned was that there are still so many people who are not registered to vote. So I know that I haven't said hello to people watching online or watching later tonight online as you as you're able. I know with COVID and different things, there are people who watch us online uh, versus coming in person. And so hello and welcome to you all too. Uh, when you registered to vote, it used to be that that made you eligible for jury duty, but that's changed. Uh, registering to vote, if that's why you have not registered to vote, don't let that stop you, because if you have a driver's license, you're now in the jury pool, and registering to vote um, doesn't affect that. So uh, so if you get a driver's license, you can be called for jury duty, and it's not dependent on registering to vote. So if that's been the reason you have held out, go for it now. And um, so registering to vote, and how many, this is a trick, okay, I'll warn you, this is a trick question. How many here are uh, registered Republican voters? And I said this was a trick question, so don't be mad at anyone. No one in Tennessee, unless you are from a different state, no one in the state of Tennessee is registered as a Republican or a Democrat. We're just registered. And so the way you become a Republican is how you vote. And establishing to be a bona fide, and that's a fancy word I've learned lately as I've been uh, doing, uh, doing this job, being a bona fide Republican is based on your voting record. Now, no one, I want to assure you, no one knows, well, I would like to assure you, to my knowledge, let's put it this way with all the things going on with election rumors, to my knowledge, no one knows how you personally vote. But it is public record that you are registered to vote, and it is public record that you do vote or not vote. And in the primary, when you vote in the primary, you pull a Republican ballot or you pull a Democrat ballot. You don't have to be registered to do either one. You can just walk up and decide at that moment. That's what we call an open primary, and that's what Tennessee has. We have an open primary, and in some states, if you're a registered Republican or registered Democrat, it's a closed primary. Once you get to the to vote, you you are you you automatically get a Democrat or a Republican ballot in that primary. But here, it's open. We're not registered either party. You decide when you walk in the door. Do you want to vote on the Republican primary or the Democrat uh, primary? and which one you voted on is recorded. That is public information. And so how you become a bona fide Republican is based on your primary voting record. Do you vote Republican in the primaries? So that's one of the things that is uh, it's looked at when you go to run for office as a Republican. Are you a bona fide Republican? Have you voted? And so um, it's just a little bit of a tidbit of information of some things that I've learned as I volunteer and come into this job. So. Um, so yes, register to vote and then vote in the primaries and establish that record. And um, that is just, that's my tidbit. That's our civics lesson for tonight. <laughs> and uh, our next speaker is, uh, if you'll come up and join me, uh, we have Connor McDonald, Secretary of the Tennessee Young Republicans. So this is a youth night, except here's, a, here's something I have also learned. Young Republicans, I think, oh, well that's college and the young 20-somethings, maybe mid-20s, but young Republicans go all the way up to 40. So pretty much half of your life, you're a young Republican. So <laughs> I know that, that was startling that minute. I thought, well, does that mean I'm what, an old Republican at this point? So, <laughs> but no, we're just the regular Republicans and the young Republicans. Come join us and tell us um, about how to be involved, what the young Republicans do, and uh, I'll turn the platform over to you. Thank you for coming tonight. Good evening, everyone. My name is Connor McDonald. I am currently the secretary of the Tennessee Young Republicans. I got involved in Young Republicans about four years ago. I uh, started my local chapter there in Smith County, where I'm from, which is about an hour east of Nashville, uh, right on the other side of Ludman on I-40. Uh, so I got, got involved with some guys in law school. I was going to Belmont Law School and uh, found some guys up there who were involved in the Republican uh, Young Republican group, and I realized we don't have a group like that out in Smith County, so I just decided I'd start one. Uh, and ended up having a really great chapter that got started and got elected to the statewide executive board the next year, and now I'm the Tennessee Young Republican Secretary. So what we do in Young Republicans is it, it works out that we have one of each member of the executive board in each grand division of the state, and part of our um, 
duties on the executive board is trying to help other counties get young Republican chapters started. Uh, so kind of what are young Republicans? Miss Julie went into it a little bit, but we're any conservative minded individual from the age of 18 to 40. Uh, young Republicans, we are, we're a big 10. We, anyone who espouses conservative views, we uh, welcome them into our organization uh, to do, uh, to, to you know, join together and uh, work for and support the big, we call it the big party, the county Republican parties. Uh, we are a distinct separate organization, but we do work very closely with your county parties and with the state Tennessee Republican Party to, um, to help get young Republican chapter started and help support Republicans up and down the ballot. Uh, actually, every state executive or county executive committee, if there is an active young Republican chapter, uh, we work closely with the Tennessee Republican Party so that way uh, your local young Republican leader actually is a voting member of your county executive committee. Uh, so we work together very well, uh, except for the times that we don't, in which case <laughs> I get a lot of calls and we make sure to work that out as soon as we can. Um, but we do, we have a great relationship with our local county executives uh, and we're all working towards the same goal and we all know that. So uh, we have a great relationship. Some people ask me, why do we need a young Republican group? We've got a Republican group in the county. Why, do we, why, why should we start a young Republican group, especially when you get out into some of these rural counties like Smith County, where I'm from? I uh, had some pushback from some of uh, the elder statesmen in the Republican Party in Smith County uh, on whether we needed this group. Uh, and some of the things that young Republicans offer is a network of like-minded conservatives from across the state and even across the nation uh, to help young people get connected and see, you know, conservative young people aren't just, you know, plain liberals. There's conservatives out there who are my age, and that's more evident here in rural communities like Smith County, like Marshall County, um, but especially in some of the communities you find young. Republicans, you know, they feel like they're Elijah when he was out in the wilderness. You know, God, I'm the only prophet who hasn't renounced you yet. Uh, and then the Lord told him, you know, I have 7,000 more who also haven't bowed the knee. Uh, so I've been in church my whole life. So sorry if those are some of my references. Uh, but it just allows us to get a young group together uh, to really coordinate and reach out to other young people. Uh, and get our message out because the ideals of the Republican Party and conservative ideals are winning ideals. You look, you know, when you strip away the personalities, you strip away the politics, and you look at conservative ideals, you keep more of your money. That I'm yet to find a person who doesn't agree with that statement. You get to keep your money and the government doesn't decide what to do with it. That is a winning ideal across the board, protecting life, Protecting the most innocent unborn lives. Um, this is actually the first event that I've gone to as an expecting father. Uh, and the pro-life, I guess, mantra has taken on even so much more as I personally experienced the miracle of life um, with my wife who's expecting now and just the, I don't know, it's just mind-blowing. Just the, 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 it really is a miracle, the miracle of life. Um, and, you know, that's an idea that most young people agree with. You might think that they don't, but when you look at the platform of the Democrat Party, you know, partial birth abortion, abortion on demand up until birth, those are policies that are wildly unpopular with even younger people in this nation. You know, people who say they might support abortion, when you really actually start talking to them about what's involved in that, and um, the specifics of what the Democrat Party actually believes about it, because they're so out of touch with reality, uh, then you know you you start to win people over uh, on that personal level, and they begin to see that conservative ideals are the ideals of their family, the ideals that they hold. Uh, and Young Republicans really gives a great uh, platform for launching and getting around people who believe in share the same conservative values that you do. I think that one of the, the ladies was started the Ronald Reagan quote about how freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. 
It isn't passed in the bloodline, but it's fought for and given to the next generation for them to carry on. And that's a, a paraphrase, but um, you know, I look at the state of Tennessee politics right now, and we're in a really good place in Tennessee. We've got both senators are Republicans, seven out of nine congressmen are Republicans, uh, super majorities in the state house and the state senate. Uh, I think I saw Representative Warner in here a little earlier this evening. Uh, but we've got Republicans up and down the ballot, county mayors, sheriffs, district attorneys, you name it, they're probably Republican. Uh, and that's a really a dangerous place to be as a Republican. It's great for right now, but it almost lulls us into a sense of we're Republican and it's always going to stay that way. Uh, and I think we don't need to look any further than Virginia or Kentucky to see that that's not the truth. You know, Virginia was uh, one of the most conservative states, one of the most reliably Republican states until just about 20, 25 years ago. Uh, and then it moved to purple, and now a Republican really hasn't competed in Virginia in just under, uh, or in the past 10 years. Look at Kentucky kind of got lulled into having a good Republican governor, Republicans up and down the ballot, and they, you know, you blink once and you have a Democrat governor. So the, the grasp that Republicans have is always tentative and it always worries me whenever I hear statements like we're Republican and, you know, conservative or Democrats don't have a chance here anymore. Uh, when the reality is, you know, we, we need to fight and make sure that we're fighting for conservative values just like the generations who came before us. Uh, my grandfather was a Democrat, um, died a true Democrat. His father was a Democrat. His grandfather was a Democrat. Uh, and he, the last election that he was alive for was the 2008 election. Uh, he would not vote for the Democrat candidate, Barack Obama, in that election. Um, but, you know, good man. And I just think how recently this state has flipped just 90 degrees from uh, the early 2000s to today. And, you know, it's not impossible if we don't keep our guard up to see it begin to maybe the pendulum start swinging back. So young Republicans, we basically wanna make sure that we guard the next generation and make sure that we have individuals, young men and young women in the wings ready to come in uh, and fight for conservative values when some of these local and state leaders, um, you know, we're, we're one of the oldest states when you look at the age of your elected representatives. Uh, and that worries me because, you know, some of these elected representatives, I love them. My representative, Terry Lynn Weaver from the 40th district, incredible representative, I love her to death. Um, but what worries me is who's the representative gonna be after Representative Weaver? Who's the representative gonna be after Representative Warner? We need to make sure we've got Republicans lined up and ready to go, uh, and that's something that young Republicans can do. So the benefits of a young Republican chapter are being connected across the state, um, doing some great local events. We've got a Williamson County chapter that's very strong in this area, uh, and we do a lot of local events. The, uh, the Wilson County and Smith County, we, we try to host events that connect across county lines to even broaden uh, the, the network for young conservatives and young Republicans. And then we also host a state convention every two years. Uh, this year we're having our state convention in the fall. It's where we elect our new executive board. Uh, we're going to have a, a big dinner and bring in a speaker. We're still talking to several speakers, national speakers, to, to hopefully bring them in uh, and have a great event for young Republicans all across the state. Uh, and how to get a young Republican group started, and I know Ms. Julie wanted me to be sure and address that. Uh, you just need 10 individuals in the county who are willing to be involved. One individual uh, obviously is the chair or the person who kind of gets it started, uh, but then you just need 10 individuals total, so nine others to get a local chapter started and uh, then get it off the ground and running. And we do everything we can at the state executive committee to make sure we support our local chapters. Uh, I'm just about an hour and a half away, so we try to cover as much ground as we can and support all our local chapters. Uh, but if there's anyone who has any interest in starting a Marshall County Young Republicans group, we don't have one, and we'd love to get one started up and going. So thank y'all for having me. Miss Julie, thank you so much for bringing me in, and I hope y'all have a great
nine people that live in Marshall County that will join me? I don't know nine people. The only people I know in Marshall County are sitting in this room tonight. So. <laughs> well, we, we're, it's great to meet you. We're glad to meet you. We're get, we actually, in our new system, not only do we have this mic and the two speakers, we have a mic for the audience because when we stream, you can't hear the audience questions. And so we, we have a full setup. And even you know, also when we have a larger event, it's hard for us at the front, actually, to hear some of the questions sometimes. So um, if there are any other questions? All right, well, thank you so much for being here. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> so thank you. The Young Republicans, I've been to some of their events in Nashville. Um, that's where I met Representative Vernon Jones, who um, was a Democrat, became a Republican, and he spoke with President Trump. And um, he has been in the state a couple times in Nashville. I was there in Nashville, uh, I think it was January 12th or somewhere, uh, the second week of January. It was uh, actually fantastic. He's running for uh, Georgia governor, and I'm not, as a county chair, I'm not endorsing, but I do know that I really enjoy meeting him, and he just had such an energy and a fresh air about him. So the Young Republicans put on great events, and it is an opportunity for leadership. If you are the chair or the president, uh, is it the president? How do you all? The chair. If you're the chair of the, t of the young Republicans in your county, then you are you have a seat at the table at the county executive committee, which is composed of the officers of the Republican Party and any heads of other Republican of official Republican organizations, such as the Republican Women. Miss Janet Heckle is the president of Republican Women, and so she is part of our county executive committee. Uh, if we have a young Republicans, then you will have a, a seat at our table uh, at the executive committee and uh, the county executive committee, which means you will uh, be, we will call on you and we will be very happy to have young Republicans helping us at events and so forth. And so it is an opportunity and it is a need and um, it's there for people who want to take that opportunity up and run with it. So, and I love the idea that the young Republicans help fill the bench. I know that we have had, uh, you know, fill that, fill that bench and be ready to run. And uh, so that's a great, a great thing. Um, so this, the, uh, there were a couple changes you may have noticed tonight. One, uh, we did not have the minutes read. So that's actually a change that, that we are making um, because it's actually not in the bylaws. And because we don't do voting and so forth in our meeting, so that was a change. Um, it's it's a, a habit that we've had for a long time, but um, that's actually a, a little bit of a change. So we'll look forward to feedback on that. In our um, treasurer's report, um, we had a treasurer's update, and uh, but our treasurer has stepped down, and we are appointing a new treasurer. So we'll announce that in this coming uh, meeting, uh, in, in the next meeting. And I did see Todd Warner here. I put that in my notes. Did he need to step out? I was going to invite him to. He see. had to leave. He did. Okay. Well, I wish I had known that. I would have had him speak first to give us an update on what all he's up to. I know that he has submitted a bill um, about. Um, masking and mandates and different things. I know he's been doing things. So I wish I'd known. I would have had him uh, speak to us and give us a brief update first. All right. Um, there is uh, the dinner tickets for uh, see Miss Janet after. Uh, the other thing that I didn't mention, of course, I mentioned our hats, which are our fundraiser, and they're $20 made in the USA, and memberships. If you're not a membership of them, if you're not a member of the Marshall County Republican Party, they are $10. It's a $10 membership per year. And you can see Miss Janet Heckel and Ina um, up here, and it, uh, the money stays local it, uh, unless we specifically voted to donate to a candidate and so forth. Uh, it does things like help raise money for our scholarships, for um, the rooms here, such as for this event, and for other needs of the county, and to help, like I say, to help hold events like our primary rally when people get to meet the candidates and ask questions. So I believe that is the um, that is our program for the evening. We have the, um, these flyers, there are postcards that you can take, put, uh, put up on your refrigerator to remind you of upcoming events or to hand out and to invite people. So again, we have the election um, information session on September 18th, I believe it is, in uh, Chapel Hill, and, um, and our regular meeting on September 21. Uh, thank you all very much for coming. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just have a, a question, kind of a comment. Okay, yes, ma'am. Um, I don't know if everybody or anybody saw the cyber symposium that Mike Lindell uh, posted. Um, I just want to say election integrity is 100% important and it doesn't matter what group you're in, if we don't have good elections, none of us are going to be able to do anything. Um, we always say, oh, Tennessee did so, we're so good, you know, 
uh, well, we don't know we're good because we don't audit, and we're starting to turn blue because we have a lot of ES and S and Dominion machines. Not a lot of Dominion, but we have a lot of ES and S. Yes, we did. And in that cyber symposium, they said that every state was hacked, including Tennessee. So, um, and they have the proof. So China interfered in our election. They have the proof. And they did it in Tennessee too. So we need to make sure election integrity is our number one priority and we need to be letting people know that it is a number one priority. Call your representatives, call your governor, call everybody you can think to call and let them know. Because if we don't have good elections, we do not have a government and we do not have a country. Thank you so much, I agree. Uh, I think they, yeah. Thank you for speaking out. I think we can all agree with that and I'm very excited. I hope you're able to attend. Um, that's why we have, this is not one of our regular monthly meetings, this is an extra because when it became, when Senator Johnson became available to talk about all that is happening with the election integrity and reform and changes uh, within the laws as well as, the, uh, like I say, Kathy Harms, they have done an incredible job of researching every aspect from registration to the databases that hold our voter registration, how secure are they, to uh, what the process of showing up, the voter ID, the absentee balance. They have looked at every aspect of our election process from top to bottom and are working very closely with Senator Johnson. So I know Senator Johnson is involved in that and making the changes. It's gonna be great to hear from him of what Nashville is doing. And Kathy Holmes will, uh, they're, like I said, they're gonna work in tandem um, and do a, a joint presentation. She is the one with all the exact details of the research team and they have gone to observe elections and have re and are uh, doing, as Senator Johnson's suggestion, a pilot program. And I believe it's going to be in Williamson County. I'm so looking forward to it. <laughs> and so this is such an important issue, and I'm really looking forward to hearing from them and learning the details. So I believe that, again, it's focused to going back to paper and, and increasing security and traceability um, at, at every level of our elections here in Tennessee. So I highly encourage you all to come to hear Senator Johnson. Uh, Senator, our Senator Reeves will be there uh, if you have questions um, to, you know, from, for our own uh, Senator. And uh, Kathy Parms uh, with the Sentinels uh, Volunteer Organization has been doing a fantastic job. Are there any other questions or comments this evening? I'm glad to see everyone here. Yes, sir. Mr. Reeves? Oh. Yeah, Julie, if I could, just because of, uh, wonderful group that we got here and I know it's important and I appreciate the words that were said by uh, the group this morning. Walter, um, let me, since this is our first time using this system, can everyone hear on this, on the walk around mic? I think you have to kind of face it to your, okay. how's that? A little bit better? Thank yes, sir. Thank you so much. Anyway, um, since we have a group here and I know something that's very important to everyone in this group here, uh, the In His Image Pregnancy oh, Resource Center. Thank you so much is having their annual benefit dinner. It's going to be on Thursday night, September the 9th, and it's from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And myself, I, I'm one of the hosts of the table. Um, I believe they have about 24 hosts that are signed up. So um, a lot of you may be getting contacted by your friends about uh, attending the annual benefit dinner. This is the largest fundraiser for the Pregnancy Resource Center. There will be a silent auction, there will be a live auction, and they will be soliciting for donations uh, to support the Pregnancy Resource Center. If you've noticed downtown, they have recently completed construction on the roof. Um, they've been able to completely um, replace the roof on the building uh, so all those uh, problems have been solved and Ms. Lowe was telling me that because of the generous people of Marshall County and others that support our, re our Pregnancy Resource Center, she is not going to have to go in and bring in a new loan. So if you are able to attend this dinner and or become a donor to Resource Center, know that the monies that you're going to be contributing this year are going to all of the wonderful services that they're providing over there. Um, they have the ultrasound now where they're able to uh, reach out to those that are pregnant or think they're pregnant and we 
they know that that helps out a lot and there's a lot of other services. But anyway, I just wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of that. And uh, I know I've got a couple of seats left at my table. You will be getting dinner that will not cost you anything. Where it's gonna cost you is yes. Um, there will be some things you can bid on and or uh, we'd love to have you sign up as a regular donor or one-time donor for the In His Image Pregnancy Resource Center. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you so much.
and, uh, and it wasn't until today that it was just a, a cancellation. So I'm very disappointed as well. Some of the things in the EO, it was a renewal of a previous EO, uh, EO such as the National Guard has been helping with um, where they put up the tents and, and have been doing testing and so forth. So some of the things are actually, um, maybe we're paying more attention now, I don't know, but some of them were repeat and just a renewal. Some of them have been new for this time. I really wish we did have the, the governor's representative to, uh, to answer the questions. Um, and I'm disappointed as well, and I'm sorry about that. Yep. And, and yes, definitely call, uh, Todd Warner and our senator have been, are very responsive and do reach out. Um, I know Senator Reeves holds, uh, what he calls, I think, Thursday, constituent Thursdays. That's not it. He, I'm sorry, I apologize, Senator Reeves, if you're watching this, but, um, but he does, he is very responsive. And so I do encourage you to reach out to both of our, both our representative and to our senator. And they are, and uh, they are responsive and ask them questions. And, uh, and I wish that we did have our guest speaker. Um, yeah, I wish we had him tonight, because I'm sure many of us had questions. I, I just wanted to say, I, I agree. I have the same concerns, especially number 14, which is if, if uh, they can have somebody call you on the phone and deem you as mentally unfit, and that's over the phone, they can do that. And that, and that combined, I don't know how that has anything to do with COVID, it doesn't make a bill, bill means a sense to me, and that was one of the questions that I wanted to ask. Yes, I'm disappointed as well, and I, and I can only just bring his apologies uh, for, for a family emergency, actually. I just, like I said, I had two members of the family in, in the hospital, and he has um, three young children as well. So uh, all I can do is, is just bring his apologies, and um, and I do encourage you, our Re Representative uh, Warner yeah, and yeah. Representative Reeves, both are responsive and uh, and and even make appointments to meet with uh, constituents as well as reply back by phone. So that's how I have found them to be, and I, I encourage you to reach out to them. I hope uh, I'm going to keep them busy the next day or two after that plug. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, oh, do we have any other questions or comments? And I appreciate this. All right, thank you all for being here, and thank you for the Young Republicans and Turning Point. That is so encouraging and uplifting for our next generation and our future. And uh, please uh, feel free to sign up for membership, our dinner on October 5, and for the Pregnancy Resources Dinner. Thank you. Have a good evening.